Son of Porthos. Storm over Paris. The rain beating with savage ferocity against the solid stone of the grey house. The wind clawing at the tall windows, rattling at the doors. Inside, Francoise Daubigny, who is responsible for the welfare and education of the royal children, makes her round. Every thunderclap, she glances uneasily at her charges, afraid that the noise and tumult of the storm will awake them. But the children do not stir, and she leaves the room silently, with many a backward glance of love and affection towards the sleeping figures. They sleep so peacefully, my little one. May heaven protect you all this night. Uh, Madame, uh, Madame. Oh, no, then. Wait till I close the door. You wake the baby. Now, Honor, what is it? Uh, Madame, uh, there is a man at the door. A man? A big hour? And on such a night. What did he want? Uh, to speak with you, Madame. He said to tell you it was so end of Loch Maria. Oh, that one. He is a brave gentleman, Honor. To whom I owe some gratitude. And he is in trouble, madam. Uh, he has with him a young lady. Who is very pretty, upon my word. Uh, but seemingly in a swoon. For he carries her in his arms. Uh, and they are both wet through. Where are they? Uh, I took the liberty, madam. Uh, they are in the audit. I will go at once. Monsieur. Oh, for pity's sake, lady, help her. You promised help. Take care of her for me, madam, and truly I will repay you. Honor him. Call Nicole and Suzette quickly. Let the bed in the blue room be warmed and bring my traveling medicine. Yes, once, madam. Hurry. Nicole. I must explain to you, lady. Not now, later. Where are those girls? We have no time for explanation here, monsieur. First things first. We must revive this child at once. Lady, if you can. Suzette, Nicole. Oh, how slow you've been. Carry this lady to the blue room. Take off her wet clothes and put her to bed. I look among my remedies for what is most fitting for her. Gently and hurry now. You are most kind, lady. And I do appreciate yes, it. Yes, yes, I know. You stay here, sir, and bide in patience. The room is no place for a man. <laughs> and you'd take up more space than most. Have patience, monsieur. I will come back to you as soon as the patient no longer needs my presence. Then you may tell me of the circumstances. Half the night gone, and still no sign of her. No sign of anybody except soft footsteps and whispering somewhere along the corridor. Truly, this means the room must be very ill indeed. And in saving her from those ruffians, I have but sent her to her grave with rain and cold and fever. And yet, if she were dying, they would surely send for me. How long she stays away? How long? Keep a good heart, monsieur. All is well. Thank heaven for that mercy. And for your kindness. Mademoiselle du Tremblay. Her name came out in the babble of her fever. She's asleep. I have given her a calming potion, and she rests peacefully now. Yet it seems to me she was overcome by some great terror. Indeed, madam, she was. I met her after vespers in the church of St. Paul and was escorting her home to the Rue Petit Mousque. Mm, that is a very dark and lonely place. I know it. It was not lonely for long tonight, madam. For we were attacked by a band of ruffians who seemed set upon abducting Mademoiselle. That's strange. Did she carry money? Is she wealthy? Far from it. I split one ruffian's head and frighted away two others. And then suddenly it seemed we were surrounded by villains. I took Mademoiselle upon my shoulder and ran... The storm fought on our side, and in the rain we lost them and found you. It is fortunate that you did. You've had a strange adventure and a terrifying one. But fear not for Mademoiselle's sake. 
She'll be calm on waking in a safe place and with her defender by her. If she's not, I will call in Sago. Sago? Is he a doctor? The royal physician, monsieur. I would have you know, monsieur, I am governess to the royal children. I have some little interest. Then he will save her. For indeed, lady, if he should fail, I should no longer wish to live. Oh, come, sir. I do assure you the young lady is not in danger of death. What she feels is but the consequence of fear on a high strung character. May heaven hear you and bless you for what you've done this night. And now it is time to talk of you. Of me? But I am of no importance, I assure you. It is Mademoiselle. You need dry clothes. I am not so delicate. But turn before the fire a glass of wine to warm me through. That is and... what I am talking of. I have asked honor and... And she as he is. With wine, monsieur, to warm you. Put it down on him. And then we'll find dry clothes for you. I cannot have two of you on my hands. Indeed, I can't. I find no words, lady, for your kindness. Then do not try. But pour yourself some wine. That will do honor and thank you. Uh, this will warm me. Your health, lady. So, you are in love with Mademoiselle de Sombre. I know not how you guessed, but indeed you are right. Do you love her so dearly that you would sacrifice your fortune to her? If need arose. Madam, I would not only sacrifice my fortune, but my lot in paradise. <laughs> A Breton talking of bartering his salvation? Good gracious, this is getting serious. And does Mademoiselle return this sentiment? She has told me that she does. Oh, my honor, this opens like a romance. But before the finale can be reached, what crosses and disappointments? Why so? If we both love each other, and indeed we do. Oh, no, sir. Because you are simple and honest, you believe the whole world likewise. Do you not realize you have a rival? A rival? How otherwise do you account for this attempt at abduction tonight? I vow there was a thwarted twain in the background, some dangerous personage who stops at naught. For this first time, his plans have failed. But what of next time, monsieur? Do you believe these scoundrels are in hire to someone loftier? Oh, come. Do you think that one would easily renounce the desire to secure such a girl as Mademoiselle de Tremblay? Out upon him, I must kill this man. Do you know him, then? I shall seek him until I find him. A very problematical result, my friend. Has he not as much reason to keep in the background as you to discover him? May he not have at his hand the means most plentiful to elude? No matter, I will seek him out. He is doubtless a rich and powerful man who has an army of cutthroats at his back. And you, you stand alone, save for your sword. From the high-handed manner in which he acts, I should say he is either a great noble, assured he may have brave justice, or a rich one able to bribe it. Madame, uh, Madame, the lady has returned. Madame, but she left for Saint-Germain some hours ago. They were turned back by the storm. Uh, she has decided to remain here for the night and go back to Saint-Germain tomorrow. Oh, upon my honor, what a night we're having. Leave Nicole to watch with Mademoiselle Honorer and send Suzette to see my lady's bed is made ready. You see to it some supper is prepared and I'll go down to her immediately. Yes, Madame. Monsieur. This is the answer to our trouble. In what way? I do not understand. Who has arrived so late? The lady whom you served as cavalier the other night. Athenae? The Marchioness de Montespan. Does that say mean nothing to you? Nothing. No matter now, for I have no time to wait. I must go down to her. Stay here until Honorin returns. He'll show you to a room where you may change your clothes and get some rest. And you may rest easy now, for all will be well. I do it you. But... May I not see Aurora? In the morning when she has rested, I promise you. Be a good heart now. Good night, Monsieur. Good night. Ah, so you have come at last, Francois. As quickly as I could, my lady. What is all this that tells me about a young lady fainting on our doctor? On my honor, Francois. One would think you were running a hospital. He was caught in a storm, as you were, my lady. And worse, she is in great danger. For like you, she has powerful enemies. Indeed. Who is she? Her name is Mademoiselle Dutrombley. 
No, my lady. My heart goes out to one so young and beautiful and in such trouble. Your heart is far too soft, Francois. Indeed, my lady. I hope your heart is soft in this instant also. For without your help, I am afraid the child is lost. How so? You are the only one powerful enough, my lady, to protect her from the man who seeks to harm her. She is young, beautiful, poor, alone in the world, for she is an orphan. If you could but take her under your wing, protect her as you have protected me, I'm sure she would repay you with everlasting gratitude. She is young, you say, and beautiful as the spring, my lady. And an orphan. Yes, that suits my purpose well. What do you mean? Tomorrow, when I am rested, I will see your Mademoiselle de Tremblay, Francois. And if she is all you say, I will look after her and take her with me to Saint Germain. Young, beautiful, and orphan. It could not have been better. Yes, Francois, you may rest in peace. I think I shall be able to use your protégé. 